In today's show, we're going to break down all the Power Platform announcements from Ignite. So what I thought we'd do is just jump in, talk through all the different ones, I'll give you a little color commentary on what I think. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today we're just going to dive right in, right? We're not going to go demo or do anything and learn that way. But what I thought it was is since there were so many announcements at MS Ignite 2019 during the keynote about the Power Platform, so I just give you guys a quick rundown and a little bit of my thoughts around them. And probably the most obvious first one is probably the least impactful, but it is the idea that Microsoft Flow is now called uh, Power Automate. Right, and really what that breaks down to is our dear friend Flow has always felt left out because we had Power BI, we had Power Apps, and Flow, and it just didn't make sense. So they've renamed it to Power Automate. The other nice thing about this name though, right, the name changes, is to kind of get people more focused. When the name like Flow, you're like, oh, it's just a workflow tool. But if you're watching the videos, you know we do lots of other things with it. We do do workflows, but we'll also use it to make data connections and we use it to do other type of, you know, processing. I use it as like what I've referred to as a poor man's ETL where I go and transform data with it. Lots of weird little things that really, you know, doesn't give enough uh, credence to it. The other thing we're going to see is in the next announcement, they've added a whole nother layer to it. Now, the one important thing for you guys to understand about the announcement, though, is we've used Microsoft Flow with a capital F to create little flows, right, with a lowercase f for a long time. Now, we're not going to create automates. What's going to happen is you're going to use Power Automate to build flows with a lowercase f. So, you'll still see the flow name out there. So, it'll be very confusing, I think, for a while. Not a big deal. But you've, you know, if you're hooked on naming conventions, it might drive you nuts. And speaking of naming conventions, they didn't really announce it, but kind of a um, interesting tidbit is I have always written Power Apps as one word, right? That is no longer the case. It is now Power and then Apps. They are two different words. So a little bit of a change there. Once again, not impacting anything we actually do, but just a little things I want to make sure you guys didn't miss. So then speaking of Power Automate and doing things that aren't workflows, they announced this thing called RPA. Oh, sorry. I mean, literally, like when they first talked about RPA, I was like, I, I could care less, right? Something about robotic process automation, I don't know, something. But so when I saw the first demo for RPA, though, I found out that really what it was is it's the ability to make a UI flow. And so what the heck is a UI flow? Well, UI flow is the ability to go and record your screen. So open up uh, Excel and like walk through the process. There's seven things you do in Excel today or go to a website and click on the three tabs you do and enter some data. So with a UI flow, you can record yourself doing that on your local PC and then have that saved as a flow that you can trigger, you can pass parameters to. So now you can automate things that were previously unautomatable. That is way cooler than RPA. So this is a feature that's went into public preview. I haven't tried it out yet. I look forward to playing with it. Um, but you know, don't discount it because it sounds so boring. It's actually a pretty cool little f functionality. And the idea is they want to be able to automate even more of those legacy processes. I've worked with people in different spaces where, you know, there wasn't APIs and things like that to automate their work. But so the idea is that an RPA should be able to come in and uh, you know, do that for them. So I'm kind of excited to see what that really shakes out to be. So if you've got use cases for that, leave me comments. I want to understand more because I've never ran into those in like my business needs, but I want to hear what you guys have got. On the AI front, remember back earlier this year, they announced uh, the business card reader and um, the image processor and the forms uh, processor. And you know all that feature functionality went GA back in October 1st. That was good. And so now they're announcing another set of that stuff. So now we've got key phrase extraction, language detection, text recognition, and sentiment analysis. And so key phrase, you know, looking at text or language, figuring out what language it's in, or sentiment, or, you know, this person happy, sad, you know, those type of pieces, they're pretty straightforward. They make sense to me. We've kind of thought about that before. But then the text recognition, this is what I'm kind of excited for. So Greg, I hope you're listening because I think this will help your app. But the idea is you can take a picture and extract text out of that picture. So, for example, maybe you're going around and you're taking pictures of thermostats. You want to get the degrees temperature off of, uh, you know, what did it, the screenshot say? Instead of having the user enter it. These type of scenarios where I can go take a picture, pull out data. I, I'm really interested to see how well that works because I've got some customer use cases there. 
also kind of AI related or really a lot of AI related to me is the ability to make chatbots. So you've seen videos out there uh, already how to do those where you had to go and like write all the plumbing yourself, but using some of the different Microsoft AI pieces, you could do it uh, in the past. So what Microsoft has done with the Power Platform here is we can now build chatbots right there in the platform without having to go and do all that plumbing. So that's a pretty cool uh, update as well. And then, you know, if you're a reader of some of the stuff I write or, you know, other, you've kind of caught the little notes, I've been telling you guys for a long time that Microsoft Teams is quickly becoming the center of the universe, right? I was an old SharePoint guy. SharePoint used to be the center of the Office 365 universe, but pretty quickly we've, uh, you know, the black hole that is Teams has swallowed that up and Teams has become the center of the universe. So with that said, the Power Platform team has said, hey, we're going to go meet these people um, there, right? The users are there. And so what they've added is, or, or in the process of adding, is a company app gallery. So the idea is when I build a Power Apps app, I can publish that to a company apps gallery that shows up in Teams so you can go browse all the apps and get them out that way. That's kind of cool. You'll be able to pin apps over on the left. You'll also, you can already uh, add tabs for apps. So a lot of Power Apps integrations with the uh, the Power, or with Teams. And on all this Teams integration stuff, I did get a chance to talk to uh, Richard Riley. So he's a senior director on the Power Platform team. And I was asking him, hey, you know, what is this all about with Teams? And so I'm gonna read his quote so I don't mess it up. I'm also gonna probably gonna put his face on the screen. If I'm really good in post, I'm gonna put it like literally on top of one of these animals because Richard and I are old friends, so I like to pick on him. But his quote was, the Power Platform is about enabling people to work smarter no matter where they work or where their data lives. As we've seen a shift to Microsoft Teams being where they are working, we have evolved Power Platform to increase their productivity there. I just thought that was a great quote that uh, Richard gave me. And the idea there, you know, once again, is Power Platform just keeps democratizing technology. It keeps making it accessible where you want it and lets you work with your data where it's at, right? We've got almost 300 connectors at this point. And so at first, they're like, hey, lots and lots of people are working in SharePoint. So Power Platform, you know, especially Power Apps, went and made SharePoint better. And so then now they're like, hey, we've had this big old push over to Teams. And so now they're like, all right, we'll, we'll go integrate more with Teams. So pretty cool that those guys aren't like just, oh, we're, you know, we are the Power Platform. We do what we want. They're following the users and making sure that they're making the integrations that people need. I, I just thought that was a pretty cool little snippet there. So I thought I wanted to share that with you guys. On the flow front, we're getting more triggers and actions, which are sorely needed. There's not enough today. So I look forward to what they continue to add there so I can do more cool Teamsy things with uh, Power Automate when I write flows, right? It's gonna be really weird, this whole Power Automate flow, but we'll figure it out. And then even on the Power BI front, I don't talk about Power BI a lot, I should. Um, but so with Power BI, we're gonna be able to start making adaptive cards. So, you know, cards that natively fit into um, Teams, which is pretty powerful. And they're gonna work on the uh, navigation, the tabs experience, so navigating inside of Teams. And then speaking of Power BI, uh, one of the big announcements for them for this time around is going to be the addition of integrations with the Microsoft Information Protection and the Microsoft Cloud App Security. That's kind of neat. Um, so the idea there, if you're not familiar with those platforms, is the ability to start doing data tagging, reporting, uh, incident digging down, like really being able to govern your data even when it goes into Power BI and even when it gets exported out of Power BI. So just taking that ability to tag your sensitive data and understand where it's being used and how it's being used is now being extended into the Power BI uh, tool set. So pretty awesome stuff. All right, I think that's everything I've got for you guys today. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention real quick is if you're like, hey, I'm excited about this. Well, you guys probably aren't because you already know about the Power Platform, but if you want to help other people who are interested in all this, Go check out uh, training.powerapps911.com. We've got uh, a free Power Apps class, a free Flow class. I guess I gotta go rename that Power Automate, and a bunch of other training things to help you start getting down the road with this whole Power Platform. So, hopefully that'll help you all. Leave me comments below if there's you know your thoughts. I'd love to see you know your reactions, all that to any of this. And with that, I'll say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.